Today we're going to talk about installing the engine mount on the RV4. We'll show you how we did it on our project and the little gotchas. This is what the engine mount looks like when you get it from vans, for the RV4 at least. The other kits will have powder coating on them, but this one does not. And on the RV4, there are four pre-drilled holes on each corner, but they are a quarter inch in diameter, so we will need to enlarge those to three-eighths. And the trick in doing that is using some smaller diameter bolts that I'll show you here. So here are the small diameter bolts that we're going to start with. These are a quarter inch diameter, just cheap hardware bolts that we're going to use to temporarily put the engine mount in place so we can get the alignment done. So there it's all bolted in place. And the reason we do this is that if we drill one corner out to three eighths, it's going to pull the entire engine mount towards that hole. And that's what we don't want. We want to make it an even distribution all the way around so we don't end up with any edge distance problems as we go through. In the middle, those two are not drilled and there is a bit of a gap in there. It's about 3 16 of an inch and the instructions will say that you can shim all these mounts as required. And there's no, like I said, there's no holes in those ones so we'll need to drill those. So here are the, the shims that we're going to put in there, 3 16 inch diameter aluminum and we'll cut them round later on. Here are the real bolts that we're going to use later, AN6 bolts with cotter pins and AN310 castle nuts uh, that we'll replace at the end. So we have the quarter inch bolts on each of the corners holding it in place and we are going to drill the center two holes first of course goes through the firewall then it goes through an aluminum bracket on the other side and straight to a 3 8 inch drill bit for this. And we'll put the shims in place and then we have those two middle holes drilled and essentially that will hold the engine mount where we want it. I'm just putting the shim in place and inserting the bolt from the cockpit side all the way through and then we can tighten the two center bolts to hold the engine mount in place. And we'll tighten down the nuts to make it nice and secure. Not torquing any of these right now, just tightening it till it's, uh, until it's secure. And we'll outline where that shim lies and we'll trim it in a circular fashion so it looks good later. So again, why we want to do this is that if we don't drill those center holes and we don't hold it with those quarter inch bolts, if we just go ahead and drill that hole at the 3 8 inch, it's going to pull the entire engine mount up into that corner and possibly cause some misalignment in the other bottom corner. So you could potentially uh, elongate one of the holes if you did that. So now we'll take the quarter inch bolts out and you can see the quarter inch hole through the 3 8 inch diameter sleeve on the engine mount there and the top ones actually line quite well. So we'll finish drilling that out. We'll insert the 3 8 inch bolt again from the cockpit side and you might have to tap it through a little bit so you might want a little rubber or a plastic mallet to help you a little bit and again we're not torquing it here we're just tightening it down with a 9 16 inch socket now for the bottom ones they don't align as nicely and you'll see once I take the nut off here you see the bolt is a little bit to the up right side of where the hole is but it's enough so that when we drill a 3 8 inch hole we don't end up with any elongation in the hole so that's really the key is to use those quarter inch bolts to hold the engine mount as close as possible so that when we drill those bottom holes, we don't end up with a, a figure eight shaped hole, which would obviously be not, uh, not great for structure. So now we have them all drilled. Now before we mount this, uh, we did get it powder coated. So here it's back from powder coat. Anytime you get something back from powder coat, you will have to ream out all of the fastener areas 
just to make sure that the powder coat is clear. So we'll do that for each of the bolt holes, just running a 3 8 inch bolt through there, cleaning up the, uh, the spacers as well that are used in the center. And not an ideal way to hold it, obviously, but just for camera purposes here. Cleaning everything up. Anytime you get something back from powder coat, you will have to ream it. And we'll just deburr each side as well with a large drill bit. That's a half inch drill bit, just using it as a deburr tool. Now, before we mount the engine mount, it's wise to see if the gear legs will fit. And because of the powder coat and a little bit of overspray, uh, they don't. So we'll just have to clear up the inside there with a, uh, a Dremel tool and a sanding disc and sandpaper at the end. Make sure it's nice and clean. This is just going to save a lot of pain later because if you do this after you mount uh, it onto the aircraft, you will have to jack up the airplane on the front to get the gear legs in. So there's a lot of in and out. So it's wise to kind of do it on the workbench before. So there we got, we're past the first stage, but now we have to uh, increase the area on the gear leg there um, where we need to remove the powder coating. And here I'm using stainless steel tape. I just wrap it along the edge where I want um, to stop sanding the powder coat off. And the reason I do that is because I can sand right up to the stainless steel tape without having to worry uh, about removing uh, paint from areas that I don't want to. So it kind of creates a little edge barrier there. You don't have to be as careful with the Dremel tool. And a little bit of emery cloth and Dremel. And I did end up having to significantly widen this area here. So you'll see in a second. So there we take the uh, stainless steel tape off and you see kind of the nice edge uh, that it gets for you. It just kind of creates a little guard so that you don't have to be so careful and so uh, prudent when you're, when you're sanding and cleaning it off. And so then we took some memory cloth to it. This is another quick way to do it. So you see we had to increase the area by about two times just to get it to clear. And you'll have to do the same thing on the top where the gear leg bolt goes. So there you have the right side gear leg in all the way, making sure that the bolt is lined so we get clearance all the way. And that is going to save you a lot of work later when it comes time to put the gear on. Now time to bolt everything on for the final time. I just put a couple of the bolts in the top. And again, it might take a little convincing and you might need a rubber or a plastic mallet to kind of seat everything. I'm getting all the bolts in, tightening them with just a 9 16 wrench for now. You have the shims in place on the bottom two there. And then now we torque this to 160 inch pounds to start with. So we'll torque everything and we might have to move the nuts a little bit later to get the cotter pins to align that you'll see in a second here. So there the cotter pin goes in part way into the bolt so we kind of have to rotate it a little bit so we never want to loosen the torque to get the cotter pin to seat so we'll just put a wrench on one side and a wrench on the side you see here just move it ever so slightly until the cotter pin is easy to push in place. Now you see it's not an ideal location there against the, uh, the engine mount itself. So we rotate the whole nut by about 90 degrees and then bend the cotter pin around itself. And there it's complete. So build yourself something, take it for a rip. Hope that helps you on your project. See you on the next one.